Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hey, Jax. How are you? I'm good. Knowing that it's Thursday, knowing that we're cruising downhill into the latter half of the week, it's encouraging. It's encouraging. Ask me how I am. How are you? I'm amazing. I'm incredible. Would you like to share why? I would. After months of uncertainty, weeks <sighs> of agony, your girl has finally secured Taylor Swift tickets for one of the shows. I said I wanted to go in Nashville because like Nashville's iconic. It's the weekend of Margot's birthday. We wanted to go big. As of this morning, this morning, we got our tickets. Now I'm still got nothing for MetLife and my MetLife seats are the seats I want to be like really close and see everything. The Nashville, I don't really care. But I'm, oh, living on a prayer. Take my hand and we'll make it our three. Oh, 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 living on a prayer. Yeah, it's very exciting. We got our ticks. The fam is going. The fam is going. I need to, you know, plan my weekend, plan my outfits. Oh my God, same. I thought it was going to be well, hard coming one. up with one outfit, just let alone one. two. Oh, well. Yeah, for your second excursion. But no, I just need one. But I'm not going to get too hung up on it. Like, we're going to be in a box with our girlies. Yeah. It's a judgment-free zone. No, and like, I I wasn't sure everyone would be down. And like, when we started the group chat this morning, I'm like, are we really doing this? And everyone was like, yes, yes. Can I bring my husband? Can I bring my best friend? I'm like, yeah, the more people, the merrier. Like, it brings the, the cost down. Like, please, yeah. invite, invite your neighbor. Invite your accountant. Invite literally the man who works at the bodega. Like, anyone can come. Yeah. As long as they're paying. Oh, yeah. No, this isn't a, a charity. <laughs> oh, no. No. Like, I'm so excited. I cannot believe. Like, I just am always having these uh, big ideas, you know? And then, like, they never happen. And then, like, I'm sitting at home. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this was supposed to be the weekend. I was going to go to Nashville. But it's the year of yes. And we got it done. Yeah. So now we just got a plan. Now we got a plan, like, weekend in Nashville. That, that's also just, like, baseline, even without the concert. So exciting. I love a girls' weekend in Nashville. And the husbands are coming. Like, it's exciting. Yeah. The husbands are coming. We were just talking about that. Like, we I'm need, not sure. I'm not because sure. Because we like, don't have space for everyone's husband. No, not everyone's husband. No, it's going to be, like, a first. Hopefully, hopefully, we're overwhelmed with people who want to bring their, you know, friends and husbands so that we really fill every seat in the box and then everyone's cost goes down. And I feel like maybe this would be a good opportunity to punish Ben for what he did to you. Oh, my God. That would be so mean. If, Actions if have I'm consequences, planning, Turdy Lou. I have been, like, the planner. I secured, like, I did everything. And my husband doesn't come. That's so mean. No, I would never do that. Actions have consequences. How will he learn? I would never. He, he wouldn't even learn. Like, he would just hate me. How are you going to teach him? Everybody saw the photo. You posted it in the reel. We did. We posted the, the beans. beans. It was jarring. And people are not okay. It's not sitting well. And we need a plan of action. We cannot let this go unpunished, Turdy. By the way, I would have more. I would also eye. be punishing myself. Like, I would not be, like, be having so much fun. If, like, everyone's there with their husband and, like, Ben's at home because I'm being, like, treating him like a child. For sure. But we could also keep it a girly weekend. We could. We should discuss it in the chat. We should discuss it in the chat, like most things. It's a democracy. Like, Jackie, take it to the chat. The box is a democracy. It's a democracy. It's a box. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's just like a major update in our lives, which is the point of the show. Yeah. And considering all of the turmoil about tickets in the past, uh huh, it's good to share the good news as well. Yeah, and that, you know, the Swifty community could be happy for us. I don't know that they'll be happy because... No, it's I a think doggy the toaster, dog world. The toaster community will be happy for us. But the Swifty community, they'll start, you know, with like, well... <laughs> they're not really deserving. They're not real fans. Jackie said this one time on the show. It's every Swifty for themselves in this life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I subscribe to that. Like, you know, I'm, I'm always looking out for number one. Yeah, it, the other Swifties didn't get you tickets. So true. They weren't worried Actually, about your place I had on the say, queue. The toaster Swifties, every time I talk about, you know, um, my lack of seats, I've gotten a million DMs from people like, I have an extra seat in Houston, Tampa. It's never been like a city I plan to go to. If somebody literally said MetLife, like, I'm there. Yeah, I was invited to Tampa. 
Oh, you. by the way, I was actually thinking you should go to Tampa. It's far. It's really far. And the drive from like Tampa to South Florida is one long, dark highway. I think they call it like Crocodile Alley or something. I drove it in the middle of the night and I almost ran out of gas. And there when? Was one, uh, when I was in Clearwater for my show mm. and then heading to Fort Lauderdale after my show, I was like, oh, it's a three hour drive. Let's not spend the night in Clearwater. Let's just drive. She was wrong. Literally, we had no gas left. We're driving on this forlorn endless pitch black highway nothing in sight nothing in sight it's um it's a reservation like land so it's just these miles and miles of forest like that's it mm. it's like a little scary it's dark there's no civilization thank god literally like i think we had maybe like 10 or 20 miles left in our gas tank that there was a uh, actually quite lovely gorgeous brand new gas station with like snacks and we got gas and i felt you know, it's like a mirage. I'm, I'm like, this isn't a real gas station. It's, it's my eyes playing tricks on me. But if I didn't see that gas station, like, I might not be here today. No, you would just like have parked on the side of the road, wait until morning. AAA would come. You'd still okay, be but here. That's, that's just like the beginning of every cautionary tale. They ran out of gas. But and you were with a big over. group. No, it was just me and one other person. Really? I thought that that was the show that family went to. No, no, no. They came to Fort Lauderdale. But nobody made the trip to Clearwater, so it was me and Lizzie, one other woman, uh -oh. on the side of the Two road. Two defenseless how, women. That's how every story starts. They pulled over for help. Never seen again. Oh no, yeah. Good, it, goodbye, Turdy Lou. Goodbye, Turdy Lou. Thank you. Good day, Turdy Lou. No, like, ever, I feel like this happens to everyone. Like, they have a few stories in their life where, like, in hindsight, they realize, like, how close they were to potential danger. Yes. That happens to me a lot. And like those stories keep me up at night, like how I could be so irresponsible and not get gas. But I didn't know that we were about to embark on this. It's like a famous highway. It never ends and there's nothing on it. Great. So I won't be going to the Tampa show is what you're saying. So if you're making the journey to Tampa from South Florida, like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, you have to take that highway and just know, be prepared, bring snacks, have a full tank. Yeah. Do it during the day. Like it was those are all scary. just good tips for a road trip anyway. Yeah, I guess. But like with road trips, it's like getting gas is all part of the fun, you know, except when you drive with me and I flush our keys down the toilet by accident and we end up stranded in Connecticut. But that was just like a me thing. There's worse places to be than Connecticut, but still. No, it was broad daylight. But still. It was broad daylight. We were at like a very busy uh, highway and a very busy rest stop. Like I didn't feel scared. I felt fucking no. annoyed. Annoyed. Oh my God. Like that was one of the worst days of my life. Just be and I also so grateful that the car was unlocked and we could get our stuff. I just also, another like added layer of that story is when we woke up that morning in Rhode Island to make our journey home, my like throat was starting to hurt and I might've just been like hungover and tired, but like, you know, it was during those times when you just like felt like you had COVID. Mm -hmm. And I was like sitting there just like, let me get home. Like, I feel like I might have COVID and like I'm getting everyone sick. I didn't have COVID, but that one, I was like already not feeling well. And then we're making such good time. Oh man, I'm driving like an animal, like so fast. It's like a four or five hour drive. I was getting us there in literally three and a half. I was making sickening time. We stopped to take a piss, get a snack. I'm peeing, the car keys fall in the toilet. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to stick my hand in this toilet. Next thing I know, automatic flush. My day was fucking ruined. That, we have an episode, um, a podcast okay. episode about it. What was, it? I think the podcast episode was called Extremely, Extremely Hasty, Hasty Flush. Flush. If you're new here, it's one of our best episodes telling the story. Um, go enjoy it, check that out. It's a crazy story. Oh, look at you rubbing your belly. I know, it's a big belly. Me too, but at least you have like a reason. Yours isn't so big. No, I, I, actually I still have like a pretty big belly. <laughs> And like a major Not really. Fupa. We all saw that olive shirt yesterday. Thanks, Selena. Yeah, I was wearing like a skin tight shirt yesterday, which I do not do. And m some of you might notice my arms were in front of my stomach the entire time, and my my legs were crossed. My knee was so high up just to cover my stomach. Lady things. No, just just like life things. Oh like, my god. And that's why you look like a lady. Yeah, I am a lady. You're a lad. <gasps> oh, <laughs> so true. <laughs> She read me to filth, but like, can you be mad when it's true? No. No, no. Or when it's just like so punchy. You can't be yeah. mad. You can't. No, you can't be mad when somebody like makes a joke at your expense, but it's such a good joke. It's like you want to be offended, but you're overwhelmed by the feeling of respect. Respect. For the person's joke. Yeah. That's the way to so do it. True. That's the way to do it. You have to respect women in comedy. Mm. That's the truth. So we've got a good show because... Last night was Vanderpump Rules, yeah. and I have never 
really seen an episode of TV that made me feel so many things. Mm -hmm. And you would think it would be because of what's, you know, gone on in the last couple of weeks with Scandaval. But like, honestly, it has, my feelings have nothing to do with Scandaval. No, we have to judge the episode on its face. And it's actually surprising what conclusions you come away with. It's surprising with what conclusions you come away with. And I actually can't recall in recent memory an episode of any show, reality, where a person came off as bad as Lala Kent did in last night's episode. It might be one of the worst episodes for any reality star in, in history. I concur. And you know, I'm a huge Lala girly. I but know. Like, this is not a great season for her. No, I can't wait to dive into it. And I'm sure we, we have some Vanderpump news too because Ariana yes, finally spoke out. Yes, and final story. Vanderpump will go into TV recap. Gorgeous. Recap and watch what happens live. Also, so without further yeah. ado, let's get into the fast five stories that you need to know. Why the hell not? Why the hell not? Today's episode is brought to you by State Farm. The State Farm personal price plan helps you create a plan that gives you options so you get an affordable price and it comes with a lot of benefits like the coverage you want, a policy that helps cover what's important to you, and an affordable price that's just for you. Because after all, life is just better when you can personalize your experiences. You know, like the Taylor Swift concert, we're making it our own. We're always saying how important and personal certain things in life are. Taylor Swift tickets, Taylor Swift playlists. I mean, for me, it's always gonna be ever more over folklore. Um, personalization just gives you your power. And personalization means you have the power to choose what you want to include and what you want to leave out. It just feels better that way. And why shouldn't insurance work like that too? So true. Like, you know, Jax and I always say we're carbon copies of each other. We're so similar. But even our insurance, so personal, be so different. You know, you have a home. We are different, even though you we're have a Tesla. Car. I have a Tesla. I have a home. Like, I need a different insurance plan than your girly over there. It's so true. And that's what the State Farm, State Farm Personal Price Plan is all about. You can choose to include options like bundling your home and auto policies. And that means you'll get the coverage you want at an affordable price just for you. In the end, you'll have a policy that gives you what you want. What's better than that? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com today to create your State Farm personal price plan. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. Again, today's episode is sponsored by the State Farm personal price plan. Today's episode is also brought to you by Kitsch. 2023 is the year of good. Feel good, do good, be good to yourself. Kitsch makes feeling good simple with luxurious game-changing essentials that beauty enthusiasts swear by. So whatever your budget, whatever your skin type, whatever your hair type, Kitsch believes that you deserve little indulgences at affordable prices prices morning noon and night it was started in 2010 by selling hair ties door to door just a hustle and a dream kitsch is a self-funded female founded and now carried in over 20,000 retail locations business their best sellers include satin pillowcases satin caps and eye masks so their satin is vegan and cruelty free they are so good for your hair and your skin while you sleep if you wake up in the morning with like a full-blown rat's nest and it's like the blowout you got the day before it doesn't even exist <laughs> try sleeping in a um satin cap it has changed my life or sleeping with a satin pillowcase they have both and they're so good they also have shampoo and conditioner bars which are part of bottle free beauty you don't have to you know keep restocking on plastic bottles of shampoo and conditioner use their bars they last longer and they're great for the environment and they're heatless satin curling rollers so you can say goodbye to heat damage they are tiktok videos of people throwing away their 600 dollars curlers for this item it's amazing and it's only a fraction of the price. It's $18. Um, right now, Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash toast. That's right. 30% off anything and everything at mykitsch, M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash toast. One last time, that's mykitsch.com slash T-O-A-S-T. That'll get you 30% off your order for all of your skin and hair care needs from a trusted brand like Kitsch. Thank you, Turdy Lou. You're welcome, Jackie O. Our first story, Eyebrow Gate explained. Oh. Kylie Cosmetics announced this morning that they have their new Kylash Lash Mascara dropping imminently, which answers a lot of people's dumb fucking questions about why Kylie and Haley were showing their eyebrows. Were they making fun of Selena? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, is oh, that the end of the story? Oh, that's sorry. the news. The Kai yeah. Lashes are dropping Oh, and I fucking told you. Yeah, I feel really good about where we landed on this. Um, you had the inclination that she was launching a mascara. I did not. But, you know, even if you didn't know that, like, I just think it's so important not to assume the worst in people. Mm -hmm. There is a Bible verse. Have they done the chafzchut? 
always give people the benefit of the doubt. So if your natural like inclination is just to be like, oh, they were making fun of Selena. Like Selena's a victim. Like I need to defend Selena. I need to bully Haley and Kylie. Like maybe you should look inward in this moment because you were wrong. You look like clowns. Um, and let's just not always like jump to conclusions. Now, a lot of people who ha have seen this are offering rebuttals just to kind of justify their bullying of these young women. They say one, Kylie and Chris definitely just decided to launch a- Yeah, that's uh, how big business works. They just decided to launch a mascara to prove that there was something just to save face. Now, formulating a product, packaging takes months. Getting a trademark, what's the name of the mascara? Kylash. Right. She, I believe you could look it up. She's had the mascara for a, uh, the trademark, excuse me, for a very long time. So that line of thinking is just ill-informed and silly. And again, you look like clowns. No, and also one month ago, Kylie posted before the things with Haley. She posted a carousel mm -hmm. on her Instagram of her eyes, where she's he wearing heavy mascara. She literally has a mascara wand on her eyelash, and the caption is "New Kylie Cosmetics coming soon." Like, I'm sorry, it doesn't take Albert Einstein to put together that she's dropping a mascara. But even Albert Einstein would know that she is dropping a mascara. Of course, he's and then no the fool. other. The other, you know, line of thinking, people rebutting this saying, well, you know, this is actually, I don't believe that they were promoting the mascara because this FaceTime photo, like Haley's lashes look bad and she doesn't even look like she's wearing mascara. I don't think they were trying to show that Haley was wearing the mascara. They're just trying to show like eyes, like something's coming for the eyes. Was it a FaceTime photo that made the... It was like, yeah, it was a screenshot of a FaceTime where they're both showing their eyes. So Kylie's... um up close with her eyes. She's definitely wearing mascara and Haley is not. You can go to my Instagram. I have the screenshot right there. Oh, you do? Okay. Um, I want to see exactly what was posted. Oh, I see. Because I thought that maybe Kylie and Haley were doing one of their videos together for Kylie's YouTube channel or for Haley's bathroom. I mean, or both. Oh. I thought that that's what they were doing. I thought they were together and yeah. um, that Kylie and Haley were filming one of Kylie's like, get ready with me using our new Kylie lash and that's why yeah. they were posting it. Also, maybe they still, that's a great idea. I, I hope that they do do that. Yeah. When they, I just, sh they should run and do one now and also a in my bathroom with Haley. I just think like we really as a society need to take a look inward into how, you know, you all acted these last couple of weeks. Like the relentless, it, they really let up on Kylie because Selena commented like, no, I love Kylie. No, because they um, live for, Ky they only are interested in Haley and Selena. Right. So, they really, and it's still, I still see all over my TikTok and my Twitter and my Instagram, relentless bullying, saying Hailey Bieber looks like an ear, like making fun of her, her business, her looks, her family, like my God, all for what? A mascara now, that's what you all did. Like I seriously, I, I think this is a teachable moment for people. I And I know they won't because the internet never learns, but everyone who engaged in this type of, you know, online harassment and bullying, like I really hope you take a look inward to see how fucking stupid and mean you are. They won't, especially if they're still justifying it. So let me get this they straight. Are. The things that were posted that meant that Haley and Kylie were making fun of Selena. The eyes FaceTime. Right, because Selena Kylie had done a TikTok Selena had done a TikTok like a week before, like showing her makeup. Yes. She was like zoomed in on her eyebrow. No, she overly laminated her eyebrows and said, I accidentally overlay that. Oh, yeah, them. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they had their eyes just at Haley Bieber and then a picture of Kylie close up that says, this was an accident. So between the word accident and the fact that there was an eye and an eyebrow, this is, you know, bullying. Um... But the reason why I thought they were making a video is because when Kylie posted this is an accident question mark, it's in front of her pink yeah, YouTube. backdrop where she does her YouTube videos. Maybe there is a video coming to support the launch of this mascara. Yeah. And maybe Haley is lending her celebrity to Kylie's cause. We don't know. But even still, uh, these, these people are crazy and they will never concede that they were wrong. No, and they're crazy and it's easy to just, you know dismiss them but when you think about like the real implications like look Haley Bieber has definitely seen all of what people are saying about her like this is a human being and it went beyond just like funny meme internet culture like it went to really dark mean places and I just I think it's wrong and I don't I don't you know what's the word I'm looking for I don't um hmm what's the word I'm looking here for what are you trying to say it's not associate but like I don't relate to my generation and uh, of the internet in this way at all. Yeah. And you know, when you think about who the Jelena stands are, like 
These are people our age because we were we were young. Yes, yeah, so we think Jelena stands are like 12, but we were 12 when they were Jelena and now we're all grown up. So these are grown ass women. No, Jelena Stanhood is definitely a mental illness. I agree. There's also like the people who just like keep talking about this story, like, you know, commentators and I'm sure like on TikTok, it's like explainer channels where they like, gossip like, channels, where they give yeah. credence to these actual conspiracy theories, hallucinations, hallucinations. Yes. There's that, and then there's also Selena, who fed into this thing the entire time, and if the entire time she never said a peep about it, instead of playing a victim, it wouldn't have, that's just like gasoline on the fire for the people who will do anything to help Selena. And to get attention from Selena. Yeah. Oh, Selena no. will comment on my video if I'm really feeling sorry for her. And like destroying two other women. Yeah, no, I, Click. there is, she bears responsibility, and I, she does, I'm sorry. Yeah, she does. This is so, this got so out of control and it's still going on. It's not even like it's It's still over. going on. Justin Bieber performed at a festival and They're they were screaming. chanting like fuck Haley in the crowds. It's like, oh, you're yeah. taking this shit into real life. You're not embarrassed. Another level of mental illness. Yeah. This was such a terror. Honestly, it gives me a pit. Such a, look what the internet can do so fast with no proof, no nothing. My God, imagine if people put their energy toward worthy causes. Or we would be a, we would be a perfect society. Or toward their own lives, maybe they would be toward healed. Toward their own lives, maybe they would be healed, Turdy Lou. Maybe they would be healed, Turdy Lou. But maybe not. Maybe not. This is just like a very upsetting saga, a series of events. Yeah, but I do. Like, hope I'm never even if even if it is you know people feel justified and rightfully so. I'm just never going to be the type of person to like hop on a bandwagon and like start destroying people. Like even with this Raquel thing, it's crazy, and I'm like eating it up. But like people are calling her like even Chloe Feynman called her a filthy whore on Watch What Happens Live. Like it was kind of crazy. Um, and and you know she she's in the wrong Raquel like there is justifiable anger towards her I'm just personally never going to be the type of person like hop on a bandwagon of internet culture and now to see how wrong everyone was like there's no repercussions for that sort of behavior because it's anonymous internet activity yeah it's terrible yeah no it's you like have Ariel to Charnis. you have to like keep it in mind that these are people and I know this Raquel thing it's just like on another level yeah and what she did was so wrong. So people really do feel so justified because it's like, well, mm -hmm. I'm, she's in the wrong and I'm in the right. But it's like, get your own life. I know. Like, I, like it reminds me a lot of the Ariel Charnas thing, like how everyone got so bent out of shape. People literally saying, I was at Polo Bar. I saw Brandon Charnas getting arrested. There's no accountability when shit like that ends up being completely untrue. Yeah. That's different, like, but yeah. Yeah, it's just like the whole message of like, internet culture having no accountability and these things just happen and they have real life repercussions and then things just move on and people never get their justice yeah it's like it's so unfair no they get their justice like 15 years later when Nobody we look cares. back on old clips you know just like with mm -hmm. like all those old interviews of like Lindsay, Lindsay. Lohan and stuff like I can't believe that's the way we treated young girls look at her treating Hailey Bieber like oh what's the God. difference she's so right she's so right what's the difference just you know new clothes yeah same, same message. outfit yeah new clothes so true are you ready for our next story someone who's always trying to better themselves yeah. and is always being knocked down along the way though will never stop her who Gwyneth Paltrow oh I have so many thoughts yeah, reveals I'm so, I'm so the ready. weirdest wellness trends she's tried and she's getting a lot of backlash for her habits Gwyneth has done some of the wackiest things in the name of wellness, but the weirdest one, according to her, apparently involved her rectum. During an appearance on the Art of Being Well podcast, she... Which we love, a Dear Media podcast making waves. Love. She revealed that she has used ozone therapy rectally. It's pretty weird, but it's been very helpful. According to Healthline, ozone therapy refers to the process of administering ozone gas into your body to treat a disease or wound. However, the process is not regulated. In 2019, the FDA claimed it was a toxic gas with no known useful medical application. <laughs> the FDA also claimed that Oxycontin oh, was oh, not addictive oh, and less than 1% oh, oh, of patients oh, get addicted. Oh, so that's just important oh, to note. Oh, oh, the FDA claims a lot of stuff. Oh, oh. <laughs> 
No motherfucking lies were motherfucking <laughs> told, bitch. <laughs> How can we trust FDA after we've seen, after we've seen Dope Sick? No, and it's not just the one thing. Like, oh, look oh, around. oh, <laughs> got him, got him. Gwyneth went on to break down her wellness routine with the host Will Cole, all while administer, administering herself an IV. She yeah. said, I love an IV. I'm an early IV adopter, noting that she specifically loves two types of IV drips. I can't pronounce so, them. Let she me said just they're say, quite hard to find and those make me feel so good. Aside from that, she said she practices intermittent fasting until around noon when she finally eats something that won't spike her blood sugar, like soup or bone broth. Then she gets in one hour of movement from Pilates or walking before starting her post-workout routine. After dry brushing in her infrared sauna for 30 minutes, she has a paleo dinner with lots of vegetables to support her detox. So the backlash she's receiving is not really about the ozone therapy. It's about eating bone broth as a meal. Yes. It's about doing Tracy Anderson and uh, paleo following paleo restrictions or whatever no, and like, basically they said starving herself what are you detoxing if you're only having ever like bone broth and vegetables right. and the the backlash has basically been this isn't wellness this is toxic diet culture so i just want to know and i i'm ready for everyone to disagree with me this is going to be a hot take unpopular opinion why the fuck do you care sure let's say some of the stuff she's doing is toxic diet culture even though i don't think um because she chooses to do Tracy Anderson, like that makes it toxic diet culture. Like doing a soul cycle is not toxic diet What's culture. What's wrong like, with Tracy Anderson in the no, it's, it's just it's just like a trendy, you know, workout. I like it's considered toxic diet culture. Be isn't she just like a, bopping around? Yeah, no, because it's a workout. Oh, because we're working out is toxic. Yeah, like who fucking cares? Hey, Gwyneth Paltrow did not get on this podcast and say this is what everyone should do and you're all fat slobs if you don't she was asked what she does and this is what she does you don't like it don't do it don't listen to the podcast like the way this has blown up and you know who actually had a very good take and I don't think I've said these words in a while Bethany Frankel mm. she's you know she's always making takes on TikTok and they're making waves she was like literally who fucking cares yeah and then there's the argument like what is this saying for girls is a like, role model charity so you know what you have a daughter tell her not to watch this you teach her differently it's not what is Paltrow's job to teach your children anything it's your job bitch yours yeah i would also say that one gwyneth paltrow is is like a guinea pig for wellness i think she tries all these things so that she can be an expert on them yep. for her side i'm sure she's tried a lot of stuff that didn't work or do anything and doesn't write about but then she's done things that she then espouses like vaginal steaming and some of the other quirkier things but like yep. that's her business and that's her brand i also would say the proof is in the pudding like this woman looks amazing and sure. she's one of the few people in hollywood who's letting herself age naturally yep. and the only thing that she's doing that's anti-aging are these natural remedies that yes seem extreme to you but like what you'd rather just having her injecting herself full of chemicals that's not extreme like it's all, everyone does has some sort of regimen that they follow I think Gwyneth looks amazing she's clearly extremely healthy like mm -hmm. I'm not saying this is for everyone also not everyone can afford to do this has the time to spend their whole day worried about wellness what they're putting into their body and how their body is like physically moving but that is actually her job her business yeah by the way you are just like straight facts today Jax Jax with the facts Jax with the facts and like th there are all different kinds of lifestyle that are promoted on podcasts on yep. tiktok on instagram everybody finds their beat like there are people for whom this is for by the way that's so true i feel like there's a lot of discourse around like body positivity and like you know accepting all all sizes and i love that but it's obviously on the heavier spectrum yes but really at its core body positivity is ex accepting all bodies and all lifestyles so why is while yes you know she's extreme on the other end why is that not acceptable right no, that's a good point and even if you just take like one i mean not that you need to take anything from her interview but even if you were just like hmm, maybe i've been interfa intermittent fasting maybe i should then break my fast with something that won't spike my blood sugar i would never have thought i would have been like bagel you know yeah, right like, sugar you don't have to then spend your whole day intermittent fast bone broth tracy anderson a paleo dinner like she's doing all these things to give recommendations to her audience which by the way there is an audience for this and Take, by the way do with it what you will if you follow gwyneth paltrow on social media which i do and it's one of my favorite pastimes um she is always cooking like she eats and it's obviously not anything i would ever eat it's like grains and veggies and eggs and 
she cooks and eats a lot like i don't think this is a malnourished human being mm -hmm. yes it sounds extreme but she was literally asked what are things that you do for this was the question and again she didn't endorse anything for anyone else it's just that's it's just so crazy to like ask someone a question and then like attack them for their own they're not hurting anyone yeah well it's not like the interview attacked her no like, but like your habits are wrong but but you tuned into it no and like if she clearly has such a big following she has such a big business she was just on shark tank like to act like she doesn't know a little bit what she's talking about and that she's just like this fringe person starving herself and that's just not the case yeah no i think everybody really needs to relax I, i'm not into this attack on on people's lifestyle when it comes to diet and i'm not a person who's ever been particularly fond of diets but like it's people's choice like that's everyone is just trying to better themselves and no one has all the answers really yeah, everyone even if someone's not trying to better themselves okay like you want to go like shoot up crack i don't care like what is this mentality of people being so obsessed with other people's choices like that's never gonna be me ever like that's my philosophy for everything like you're doing something to yourself and I would never do it. Live your life, bestie. Like, I am never going to get so bent out of shape about what someone else is doing, what someone else's choice. That doesn't affect me. Yeah. I will never of care. I will of never course. care. Get a life. Yeah. Focus on you. She also winds up being really on the cutting edge of stuff. So True. I would maybe take heed. But no, like, even like, like the, I mean, that vaginal steaming, I don't know where that's gone. But I remember, like, she had her show on Netflix and she was talking about, like, the Wim Hof method where it's like a cold plunge. You yep. see everyone with a fucking ice bath yep. in their backyard it, now that they get at Home Depot? 100%. 100% no and she talked about this on Shark Tank she was like w years maybe 10 years ago like they were writing on the blog about gluten-free and people were like that's so crazy that's so crazy that's so crazy now you literally can't walk into a grocery store without being attacked by gluten-free products I know and now it's all about grain-free she said and by the way that's not to say everything she talks about is gonna no, be that next thing I but we have to give her a little bit of respect for sure and I just don't feel like like I don't understand why if I don't have a gluten intolerance I need to be gluten-free no no and one's like, properly explained that to me no i also feel like people who are gluten-free like are fine like they're actually not like man some people make it for health choices like sure love that but people are saying they have a gluten intolerance but like their whole life they were completely fine i'm suspicious yeah grew up celiac, on like peanut butter jelly sandwiches right celiac is different like you have an actual medical like uh intolerance like i get that but people who just like make up that they're gluten-free like okay i just feel like it's people trying to be interesting yeah or a healthy but i don't i don't understand um, maybe there are health benefits they haven't been communicated to me well enough in order for me to be convinced because you know i'm always open to bettering myself i am turning loose you are i am and why can't i have a grain what's wrong with grains you know what actually i you know obviously i feel like for a lot of us like the millennial kind of gwyneth paltrow vibe is lauren bostic like she's always sharing wellness and i took a wellness tip from her and it has changed my life what actually, is it i it's like so dumb and it's not like anything actually like i don't even know if you could be considered wellness but i bought a tongue scraper that sounds wellness jackie you have to get one wait why what does it do when i brush my teeth in the morning i also just scrape my tongue with your toothbrush I, no with a tongue scraper okay and i have brushed my tongue with a toothbrush many many times over my life you would die if you saw the stuff that comes out of my tongue in the morning it's like so much phlegm where do you get it amazon Mucus. amazon okay. it's um i tell you i feel different and you know i'm always telling you like i'm waking up with a sore throat like whatever i feel different i scrape my tongue before bed and after i wake up change my life shout out lauren bostick like legitimately was there a specific brand amazon like it's a metal like Is uh it it looks v? like the letter U. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I'll go with the best seller. And I go tomorrow. fucking hard, Jackie. You will die. The more the ones at night aren't that crazy. In the morning, I cannot get over. And I feel like I've noticed a big difference in my breath. That's what the the title says. Bad breath reduced. Yeah. Great girls. And how much is it? It's like 10 bucks on Amazon. It's not expensive. Yeah. I. It's already ordered one second. It is. I think it was like nine. Guys, scrape your motherfucking tongues. Like it's disgusting. Nine ninety seven. Especially if you've had like breath problems, scrape your tongue. It's the best thing I ever did. That's wellness for sure. Yeah, no. And so now I'm like, maybe I need to get into wellness. I feel weller. Maybe I should be taping my mouth. Uh, I should be taping my mouth. I've also started to take magnesium before bed. I take magnesium every day as well. 
that's like a Ben Soffer thing that he's Ben's very into wellness weirdly and I'm always like yeah those beans are extremely well <laughs> no Ben is like always looking into like eastern medicine like things he could do to like but I feel like he's also Ben loves a quick fix yes but weirdly no when it comes to his body like he's always looking for like alternatives and he's been like on my ass about magnesium when I tell you I've taken magnesium before bed every day this week what's it doing for you first of all I'm having a much more restful sleep I am waking up on my own hmm. and I find my thoughts to be slightly calmed before bed you know I'm always thinking about like crazy shit before bed interesting I take it for pregnancy migraines and it's also Headaches. good for um I think leg cramps. Yeah. Well, I've been told to take magnesium for my leg cramps. Um, and I've gotten magnesium when I've done IVs for like hangovers. I've gotten ones with magnesium and it makes me so tired. And the nurse one time actually told me magnesium can make you tired. So it's also good to take before bed. Well, I do happen to take my vitamins before bed. So, that so I'm just like kind of on a wellness journey. On a wellness journey. I mean, I'm on a wellness journey too. In part two of my video collab with Flav City I saw. is up today. We went shopping together for baby food. And I just like picked out what I would buy at the store. And he told me what was wrong with it and what to get instead. Or if I was making the right choices. They're on my Instagram and Flav City's Instagram. And people are quaking. Like I'm a Bobby approved girly. Well, like, I would also like love to 10% know like. 10% of the time. For me, like the wellness things I've been doing are like very low lift. Like I'm not going to get a cold plunge. I'm not going to get a dry brush. Um, So if anyone has any like. Dry under, brush like, sounds low lift. Mm, I don't know hovered over naked in the shower sounds like a lot of back work I think you could like you could just dry brush your face okay well if anybody has like low lift <laughs> wellness things that like I've really made an impact like for me like the toothbrushing scraping has made a real impact and it's three seconds of my day and it was like a $10 thing on Amazon any low lift wellness tips that'll just make me feel better especially like during the week in the mornings let me know okay Love I'm that. kind of like loving this journey I know we're we're just constantly evolving Turdy Lou I know, because if like a year ago, me heard me talking like this, she would slap me in the face. I know, add wellness to the list. Downton, yep. reading, wellness. What was the other thing? Wearing your hair up. Hair up. Hair up. That's hair a up. wellness tip. It is. Are you ready for our next story? A little drama, a little yeah. movie set drama, because Cameron Diaz is working on her comeback film and allegedly Jamie Foxx is throwing it into chaos as he sacked four crew members hmm. and is just having a total, quote, meltdown. Well, this is the first time hearing of a Cameron Diaz comeback, and for that, I'm excited. Exactly. Cameron Diaz's first film in nine years has reportedly been thrown into chaos after co-star Jamie Foxx's onset meltdown. It's been reported that the actor has become so unhappy with production on the London set of Back in Action, that's the movie, for that four people have been sacked. The Netflix comedy will mark Cameron's return to acting after previously stepping from the spotlight, stepping away from the spotlight to raise her son. According to The Sun, the Oscar winner, Jamie Foxx, has axed an executive producer, two directors, and even his own driver, becoming pretty unpopular <sighs> in the process. A source told the publication there have been some major issues on set and Jamie has had a major meltdown over it all. By the way, just like Cameron Diaz and Jamie Foxx working together again after Annie. Again after Annie, they also worked together in 1999 for the movie <coughs> Any Given Sunday. So they obviously like working together. Yeah. And I feel like Cameron Diaz is like really down to earth and she wouldn't like gravitate towards someone who's like mean and difficult to work with. So I, I don't know. There's something about the story that's not adding up for me. Yeah. He, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I need this movie and I need it now. So everyone's trying to find a way to work together. Do we have a synopsis? Is it like a rom-com? Jamie and Cameron fall in love. Back in action sounds like a like an action movie. Like it kind of is. So it will be directed by Horrible Bosses director and written by the Neighbors screenwriter. It's been filming in London since December. Little is known about the plot, but the actors have been spotted film filming spotted filming stunts. So that gives action um, on the River Thames alongside mm. their co-star Glenn Close. Oh wow. Yeah. This doesn't sound like a classic Cameron film. No, but she's always switching it up. I know, and she's always right. She has a good picker. Even though I do think that like a lot of celebrities make bad movies when they work with Netflix just because Netflix pays them a lot of money. Yeah, but she is not coming out of retirement to embarrass herself. Yeah, and she doesn't need the money. Let's me not forget she made $100 million on Shrek. Yeah, but I think that it's possible to make good movies with Netflix. It's possible, I think but it's, I, I think they start to get bad when you have like a multi-movie deal. Yeah. And then by like movie four, we're like, what are we saying now? But yeah, a, but a first movie back in nine years, there's a lot of story to tell. 
there is. I just, whenever I hear that Netflix is making a movie, even with the Nancy Myers thing we were talking about yesterday, I'm always just like certain it's not going to be good. Netflix like original movies are really not known to be amazing. Some of them have been great. Yeah, of course. But some of them I'm like with big stars, I feel like they're always getting like Mark Wahlberg, Kevin Hart, The Rock, like, and they're like, I couldn't even tell you the names. Yeah, they're all pretty forgettable. They're not bad. I watch them, I enjoy them, and I look forward that they're coming to Netflix, but they don't stick with you. They're almost like Hallmark, but with like bigger budgets and celebrities. They make like the same movies. Yeah, they're like rom-coms. It used to just be like the stuff that we would go see to the movies and see, like crappy movies. Right. But I guess there's just more of them now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I will be watching this movie because I'm a Cameron Diaz girly, and I think her and Jamie Foxx have great on-screen chemistry. Mm -hmm. Of course. But I don't know if I'm buying this this drama. Like maybe it's just I don't know. It just doesn't sound just doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, there's got to be more to the story. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Is it our fifth and final? No, it's our oh. fourth. Okay. One of your favorite, least favorite people. I could give you a million guesses and you never would guess. One of my favorite, least favorite. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you a few. I'll give you a few clues. Okay. Reality TV. A show on Netflix. Crichel. No. Close. Okay. Your least favorite person on that show. Mary. <laughs> Mary Fitzgerald was worried when Brie Tiesi joined Selling Sunset. So Nick Cannon's baby mama, Brie <gasps> Tiesi, is joining the new season of Selling Sunset. Mary spoke to Design Scene in an interview and said, I was a little worried when she first came. I was like, I can't do any more drama. Please don't give me any more drama. But oh, she shut said, shut up, Mary. Right. Like, that's literally the fucking your show. job. That's your job. Um, she said that Brie ended up being nice and that she likes her a lot and there will be a very interesting dynamic on the forthcoming season. I kind of love that they have like another celebrity adjacent person like Chrishell was Justin Hartley's ex. Yeah. Um, I kind of like that. I did see also an article that was, you know, un verified sources that, you know, Christina's obviously off the show and Chrishell is the new villain. Huh. In my eyes, she always was the villain. Agreed. So for everyone to see what I see, if that's, you know, potentially happening, I'm on board. I too am on board. I don't think I have the patience to catch up on the show because no. it's really bad and slow. I and didn't I, even finish the most recent season. It was really bad. I didn't start the most recent season. And to, you will watch like 10 hours of content to just find out that like, you know, Christine and Emma dated the same guy 20 years ago. I'm, I'm yeah. good on that. Um so unfortunately it's not for me but I'm glad that you know they're keeping it interesting yeah this is a good casting if I was still into the show I would watch but it got really bad the first season was amazing the second season was great and then after that it was just bad and I'm sorry there is no show without Christine no like try as you might may you can do the most constantly but she was the show and I loved her but whether you hated her or loved her you can admit she was the show yeah yeah. So they're just going to have to, you know, they've made their bed. Now they lie in it. Mary. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? If it is the fifth and final story that's brought to you by Manscaped. Ladies, this is a public service announcement. Our friends at Manscaped now have beard products that are going even further with their brand new Weed Whacker 2.0. Tell the world the leaders in below the waist grooming are traveling north of your man's South Pole. Their nose hairs are a major turnoff and the new Weed Whacker 2.0 and their new beard line confirms they have the best tools for his hygiene too. Time for you to upgrade his game by going to manscaped.com and use code TOAST for 20% off plus free shipping. So meet the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It is the ultimate package that makes it easier than ever for the man in your life to craft his signature look. It starts with the Beard Hedger, which is the only beard trimmer he'll need. It has a titanium coated T-blade. It is tough on hair but smooth on his face it's waterproof cordless has a rotary wheel and it, it has over uh, it has 20 hair cutting lengths with one guard so there's no drawer full of like all those attachments which is so annoying it's so messy the Pro Kit is much more than just the trimmer, though. It comes with their dermatologist-tested formulations for post-trim care. So that includes Manscaped Beard Shampoo and Conditioner, Beard Oil, Beard Balm to moisturize, style, and shimmer his facial hair. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three gifts, so a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure his beard is ready to impress. And the brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 offers improved blades and skin-safe technology with a no-tugging guaranteed. It's never been so painless to mind his manholes. Get 20% off and free shipping with our code TOAST at 
manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use our code toast. Perfect gift for the guy in your life, but then it also like serves you, which is just great. We love a self-serving gift. Today's episode is also brought to you by Legacy Box. All right, I feel like Legacy Box is a brand I'm always getting DMs about. Like, what was that company? What was that code? Listen up. Do you have drawers full, storage full of old cassettes, VHS? Jackie and I grew up in the VHS era, and like for years we had these boxes in our storage unit of like family memories of like our dad and us singing the Spice Girls. And like two years ago, we finally did Legacy Box, and it was the best thing we ever did. It is a super simple mail-in service to have all of your videotapes, camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures converted to perfectly preserved digital files. Legacy Box is the industry leader, and they have helped over a million customers safeguard their past. So it's a super easy uh, system. They will mail you the mailing label. You throw it all in the box, put the label on, and then you will get emails throughout the process of like, oh, you've arrived at the warehouse. Oh, your digitizing has started. It's on the way back. They'll send you emails the whole time because like they know what they're, you know, preserving is like really important to you and then you get it back we got it on a thumb drive you can get it on like on a bunch of different times uh, a bunch of different types of things like the cloud or a dvd we got a thumb drive it was the best thing we ever did so legacy box is offering our listeners an incredible 50 percent off go to legacybox.com slash toast order today to take advantage of the low price and then send in your media whenever you're ready so you don't have to do it now but just get it with our code. That's legacybox.com slash toast. There's never been a better time to preserve your entire collection of memories. Your family will thank you. It's a great gift. And then you'll also just be like the favorite daughter or son. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our fifth and final story, the latest scandal news. Ariana oh. Maddox has finally spoken out about the scandal. Let me she, just pull up my notes. I literally had notes from yesterday's episode. Okay, well, so first we're going to do scandal updates yeah. and then an episode recap because there's two things I want to talk about quickly. She put out a gorgeous picture of herself saying, hi, where to begin? I want to express my most sincere gratitude for the outpouring of love and support I've received from friends, family, and people I've never met in the last two weeks. When I felt like I couldn't even stand, you have all given me strength to continue and see through my darkest hours. To say I have been devastated and broken is an understatement. However, I know I, that I am not in this alone. So many of my closest friends are also grieving this loss right now. I'm so fucking lucky to have the best support system in the world and I hope I can repay every single person for the love you have shown me. What doesn't kill me, better run. Oh my God, I was obsessed beyond with that final line. I was just reading it. I'm like, I was like, oh, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. And then I'm like, wait, what doesn't kill me, better run. I'm using that in perpetuity. It's so true. It's so good. It's so good. So she's doing well. She looks amazing. I th- she was at this wedding in Mexico this weekend. I think that's where this picture is from. Katie also said on Watch What Happens Live that she's doing remarkably well. I think, you know, I'm sure it's highs and lows. And the whole world rallying around her definitely doesn't hurt. Yeah. But I'm glad that she, I wasn't even waiting for her to say anything, but it's like nice to hear from her. You know? Agreed. I wasn't expecting to hear anything from her. I just honestly, I wish her well. Like, I hope yeah. she's just doing well, taking care of herself. She doesn't owe us, you know, social media content, but appreciative. Appreciative. Then also, I wanted to share Kristen Doty went on the Vile but not, Files. Yes. Yeah. And she said she can see why Tom Sandoval went for, quote, fucking dumb Raquel Levis. She did not hold back. All these podcasts that are coming out, there's so much. I have a lot of thoughts, but first, She called Raquel dumb with no personality and said that she can see why Tom cheated on Ariana with her. Ariana has a backbone. Raquel does not. Raquel validates everything that Tom needs to be validated. She claims that Raquel makes Sandoval, Raquel 28 makes Sandoval 40, important, feel cool and talented. Meanwhile, she shaded her ex-boyfriend's quote, stupid band and his sequin pants and his nail (sighs) polish and his dumb haircuts and the pedophile mustache for fuck's sake. She told no lies in that statement. No, no lies were told. And I think that, um that tracks like you can understand why Sandoval like he needs this validation he's he's having a midlife crisis and so choosing Raquel people are like so random Raquel no it really does make sense she's very young that would make him feel young she's not she doesn't have like a crazy backbone she's not gonna like stand up to him he's just very go with the flow and he wants someone who thinks the world of him and Ariana's like constantly like bringing him down to reality but weirdly Ariana thought the world of him and supported him blindly which is so shocking to me and I can't understand it but I also was thinking about like Tom and Kristen's relationship and I felt like you know I'm sure they started out in like a normal relationship and Kristen said like they should have broken up after two years and then like they were in the relationship like two years too long and I feel like he likes his 
partners like when they're girls yeah. in, the, in the not in a physical sense but like in a mental, mental sense and then like you become a woman and like you're sure of yourself and you stand up for yourself and you don't see him through these rose colored glasses anymore so it's on to the next and so Ariana's like a few years younger than Kristen and, and she was very like girlish about the way yep. that she liked him and now like Ariana's like a full woman with a business and all these things and like it's like, you are less impressive no, it's so, you're so right. Like once the, in, in his eyes, once they become equals, he's out. No, like you are smaller when you are standing next to someone who is bigger. But if, yeah. like when they are small, it makes you feel big. No, that's a really, so once again, Jack's him being facts. 40 going after a 28 year old, especially at this stage in his life where he really is looking for, like, especially as he's getting older, like I'm sure maybe when he was younger, he really drank, believed his own, own, and drank his own Kool Aid. Like it does make sense why, not make sense, but. You can see a pattern of like yeah. why this person is the way that they are. And also I could see like Raquel, she's finding her feet even in the episode mm -hmm. last night. I mean, I don't know how she went from that to making the worst decisions of a of person's life. But like in a few years, she will come into her own too. And yeah. honestly, it will happen again. Yeah, no, you're a hundred percent right. The episode last night was so interesting. Um, and I think it's important to know, we don't know for sure. and. Katie Maloney was on Watch Happens Live last night. And to be honest, either she was like gatekeeping a lot of information or she knows nothing. Because There's no way that she knows nothing. She was definitely gatekeeping. And the word on the street, because Sheena's friend did a podcast with another one of Raquel's friends. And they said that Raquel and Sandoval started to gravitate towards each other on guys night. Right, night. after Vegas. But, after but Vegas. then when Katie was asked... She said like she didn't know if in the show she said it's they, possible. It's almost no. like she didn't want to say she didn't want to say no because then that makes her look her and Lala look even worse on tonight's episode. I agree, and it's like how do I feel like I know when the affair started and you don't? And you like, don't. You have access to every single person in the relationship. Yeah. So I really do believe as of last night's episode they hadn't started hooking up yet, and so I agree. I'm gonna, I am going to judge last night's episode on its own and then also through the lens of what I already know. But just watching last night's episode, I was floored. And actually, Ben watched with me and Ben, I was trying to explain to Ben the dynamics and he didn't really understand how like what Raquel did is like such a betrayal. And he was like, I'm team Raquel, justice for Raquel. Like if you just watch the episode. So that's somebody who has no al alliances. And you know what? My, I had so many takeaways, but my major takeaway is Christina Kelly is the fucking worst she's such a follower and she's such a mean girl and i feel like my only memories of her and andy actually brought it up on watch drop and slide which i was grateful for was like dragging sheena's wedding dress crop top making so much fun of her because she wasn't invited to the wedding it was like such a mean girl thing to do and even last night she like runs into the room she start, like everyone everyone was responsible but like christina kelly was just like eating it up she was like so excited to be a part of the cool girl crew and she sees raquel bought her own nightlight and she runs back into the room and is like she has a nightlight and these girls are so hypocritical literally Lala's laying there with her blanket she brought from home no and so, I saw a tweet that was like this girl is going to clown on Raquel bringing a nightlight and it was Lala in bed with her blanket and her bottle from when they went to Mexico a few yeah, years which ago which was yeah but no I'm saying on this actual trip Lala is laying in bed with Christina Kelly with her leopard blanket she brings it to the house and have a suey yeah 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 she, I'm like these are hunchbacks who can't see their own. The hunch. whole like, episode was of full of hunchbacks saying Lala saying I respect relationships. She doesn't feel like Raquel respects relationships. Oh. When Lala was with Randall when he was married, and it's like okay, maybe Lala didn't believe that he was married, but every single person around you knew he was married. But you're the closest one to it, and you don't see that he's married and slept with James while he was with Raquel. Like uh, I, I, I feel like all those things are in the past and we can move on from them, but then that doesn't make you the expert holier on, than that on relationship respect, you know? Yeah. So let's go through the episode because they're in Vegas. They get back from this night. Raquel is drunk, which is quite literally what they went on the trip to do. No, literally. And it made me sad, even though like on a drinking level I do relate more to Lala and I think Christina Kelly she's very pregnant now yeah so I think she's pregnant on the trip yeah she didn't drink at all everything was like yep. a club soda, soda water wine. um so we have two sober people Katie drinks but like she's clearly you know manages it and Raquel is like in Vegas single in the prime of her life drinking and like she wasn't even like that crazy 
for like what she came in and with a plate of food and this is like the craziest thing you've ever seen so dramatic how everyone was being and so mean and i didn't even think what she said to lala was that mean especially given they kept lala kept like telling everyone the story of what raquel said and she's just glazing over what lala said like i told her i wouldn't be comfortable like you know around my man which is such a mean thing to say right it ended up being true, but still in that moment, it's not true. And so they're like, and isn't that so crazy what Raquel responded? It's like, well, what you said was also like kind of crazy. Yeah, and it all stems from like Raquel being over all over Oliver, which is like, Lala, did you give did you give her express permission or did you not? Right, right. Are you upset that she hooked up with Oliver or are you not? You can't be like somewhere in the middle. You literally told her to go and do it and then you're like treating her poorly because she did it no last night's episode was literally raquel's villain origin story like <laughs> she's standing outside that hotel oh my room. god Listen, that literally I, made me so sad ben was like bereft he was like that is so sad it was so sad and honestly she should have left the next day i was so surprised that she didn't but it's almost like she had drunk anxiety and she believed them about what they were saying but they were like gaslighting her into saying she was crazy she took her heels off in the hallway literally who hasn't done that in vegas she ate food and she went to bed like she made out with one guy who she knows like they work at the same facility. Like, what's the big fucking deal? No, there's... What was I missing that was so embarrassing and crazy? And no wonder she had a panic attack with her drunk anxiety. But that panic attack scene was so fucking real. Part of me thought for a moment that she had maybe already slept with Sandoval. And so, like, all of this anxiety, drunk anxiety, and then this big secret caused her to have the panic attack. But I really don't believe they had slept together yet. But that was a real fucking scene. And they literally gaslit her into a panic attack. And I think when they all saw she started to freak out, they decided to, like, let up a little bit. But then they go to dinner that night, and the whole conversation, again, with Charlie. Charlie is a real one. She's a real friend. She's so funny. She has brass balls that she you know what she speaks facts she wants to take on lala katie and christina kelly like and she's not even a cast member and she she's was, not doing it in like an attention seeking way and i was just glad in that moment this episode isolating it and isolated it on speed, i was glad that raquel had someone in her corner because like lala just and james i was really glad that james said this in his interview because it's true lala just doesn't like raquel yes. and so it's just not fair to invite someone on this really intimate girls trip and then be with your two best friends who you're literally going to be giggling with and slumber partying and uh -huh. showering with and having this one person that you're treating other it's not nice you know what the trip really needed sheena yeah, well, Sheena is the worst. Oh, my God. She was being the wotiest wot last night. Like, so cringe. First of all, it really wasn't a divorce celebration party. No, when it she was, said that, I was like, what the what? fuck? But then, no, they, so she is, but then it like, was such, a little bit. No, it was like a, a single girls trip. So yeah. another way of saying that. No, but there was that, a Schwartz pinata. Yeah, I guess you're right. You're right. But Sheena was just being like a shit starting pot stir. Shit starting. We, if she says get your Schwartz back one more time, I'm going to vomit. Cringe. cringe. I'm going to vomit. And I'm going to put it in uh, a box. I'm going to send it to her house. I feel like vomiting. I literally was cringing, but she's clenched. I can't hear it again, Turdy Lou. Hold on. I'm just reading my notes because I had a lot. Oh, and so the overall, you know, takeaway from the episode was like, Lala, my God, is this hunchback who can't see her own hunch. You're, so she's allowed to fuck Raquel's boyfriend and I know she doesn't want anyone to say it but she was a mistress she's allowed to do both of those things nobody's allowed to be affected by it nobody's allowed to talk about it but she's afraid of Raquel being around someone's man and I know how that sounds given what we know but I'm just saying isolated episode in this moment like Lala was being insane last night and I feel like this whole time she's kind of been like so real that's why we really love her it's like yeah she doesn't have these crazy alliances to people like she just says what she feels no and like she speaks the facts and like she even says like a hard truth sometimes but then last night she was saying I hate the label mistress because it doesn't Get, like put any accountability on him Randall. it's like no no he should be accountable but like you no by the mistress. way the word mistress doesn't put any accountability on randall but it doesn't change the fact that she was a mistress why it, it like it kind of does it means that randall had a mistress which is like right. a fucked up thing to do no and like lala speaking for women like you don't speak for me like because you were being crazy no and like i just it really bothered me it's like okay well randall's not on the show how 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 do you want us to hold his feet to the fire right now like you're the one 
ha- having this conversation. Like, right. Like, it somehow became a fight between Raquel and Lala, and Lala has no legitimate gripes against Raquel. Katie does. And I actually do agree. Like, Katie has been pretty gracious, like, inviting her on the trip. And I do feel like they could work it out and get to a place. But, like, this whole Lala thing just, like, blew up and separated Raquel from this group. And it's so random. Yeah. Like, in the battle between Katie and Raquel, Raquel is in the wrong. In yeah. the battle between Lala and Raquel, Lala is in the wrong. But then Lala uses Katie's arguments against yep. Raquel. And it's like, that's not, not what we're talking about right now. Not fair. And then Christina Kelly is just there, like, eating it all up, being a mean girl. Yeah. It's, it was such a hard episode to watch and I was so grateful for Charlie and I've never really particularly likened to Charlie like I I just I didn't think she was right for the show but you know what she spoke fucking facts last night I feel like when she first came on the show she tried a little too hard and it, yeah. it read wrong and now that she's not a full-time cast member she comes to the things because she's either friends with these people or she's not there because she's not like she's just being herself and she has nothing to lose and only things to gain by saying the truth. stuff that's like funny and true and I think when, that's a good position to be in when Raquel and Charlie came out and said that they were leaving and they were like we're gonna go see Schwartz that was like the the dagger of this century like that's the only no, thing it's like group- do you not value your life no I know but you know what it's like this group has really m- like mocked her endlessly this whole weekend and yes in the Raquel and Katie scenario Raquel is wrong but like it was just such a good way to go it's like oh you've been like up my ass non-stop attacking me this whole trip Schwartz dagger like yeah. it was kind of the perfect exit and she she had some good lines last night but she's not sure of herself so she like shakes when she delivers her yeah. supposed jabs yeah it's hard but I'm glad to at least see her in this instance like standing up for herself and even if she's not the most eloquent, like she's saying what we're all thinking, which is like, Lala, how dare you say this about me? Like she stumbles and by the way, it over took her, her words, it, but she's it getting It took her 24 there. hours. She should have said it in bed in Vegas, but she was drunk. It and took she her just felt so bad. Hours. You know the feeling. Yeah. It's like, I'm just so sorry. Like, okay, I, uh, yeah, I'm a little mi- bit miffed about this, but I'd rather you not be mad at me than me be mad at you right now. But it was like this elephant in the room. Yeah. I don't I wouldn't trust you with my man well I shouldn't have trusted you with my man and by the way you're right Lala just doesn't like Raquel and they, she really was just like extra pissed about the Oliver thing because when you stem when you like follow that storyline it's like James chose Raquel all those years ago mm. like James and Ra- James and Lala like have something weird they like, do but don't you think if Lala ever called James one day and said, like, I want to be your girlfriend, he would break up with whoever he was dating? Yeah, yeah. But I just think, like, she feels this, like, protectiveness over James in a weird way. She does. They are ride or die for each other. They came yeah, on the so show weird. together. Like, they... And that's, like, a different alliance that throws another wrench. Like, because when then Raquel went to boys' night, and it's like, on this in this instance, we are, are on Raquel's side, but it's like... Raquel has an enemy there, James, who's an ally of Lala. I was like, oh shit, Raquel, there's just traps everywhere. So then boys' night comes. Um, nothing really happens. Sheena's just being like, pick me energy. And then the girls show up and the episode ends. And people are like trying to glean like, oh my God, Sandoval knew she was coming. Look at his smile and look at the way he's looking at her. I didn't really see anything like that was that telling. Um, however, now what, looking at the episode through the lens of what we currently know, a lot of it is, you know, eerily foreshadowing. Yes. But I don't know. At that time, I really don't know if I would have said, Raquel, I wouldn't trust you with my man. Like, I just think that was like a low blow of Lala that happened to be true, you know? Yes. uh, Agreed on Lala. But Katie said in her interview, and this wasn't, this was before she knew anything. Not edited. She's only, Raquel's only interested in like people her friends are interested in or people her friends have dated. So that was a pretty astute observation. But also like you guys are like just swimming in the same fish tank all the time. Like where else is she supposed to go? Not saying that she should go to Sandoval, but like, um, you know, even like, so they're yeah. filming at this like forlorn empty club and Oliver's there and they're single and he's cute. Right. Like, and he's okay. also like a part of the Bravo universe. Like, yeah, like, w- like she's not the type that's just gonna, I guess that's because she's not the type that she's outgoing. Like the way that Lala went up to those guys, Raquel could never. No, could never. But then I also felt like Raquel, like Lala going up to these guys, like she was just like working so hard to try and prove something because she got called out like two hours earlier for not being able to like land a man. And honestly, like I found her her behavior to be like a little desperate. Yeah, it's true. And then like they were at this like kind of weird fucking bar and they're like, this is so fun. Like 
it wasn't. No, they did their best because yeah. the episode could have turned into like, okay, the two fun girls left and like the three boring ladies are like alone right. in Lake Havasu. Like, what are they doing in Lake Havasu? The three of them. They no. really did their best to look like they, they were, were having, having fun. fun even I wasn't buying it. Two of them are sober. Right. Um, what is going on? And Christina Kelly is it. like in a relationship. So it's only two single right. girls. They did a good job. You know, they swam. Yeah, yeah. They got on the float. You know, they had like a group combo. Like, we can't come off looking like losers. Everybody get in the lake. Yeah, and then they went to that bar that night. I'm sure that's the last place they wanted to go on Earth. Right, no. And then they like hung out with the guys on the boat next to them who were like forlorn as well. Like, it was... <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm just trip, saying, it, it could have been a lot sadder. Even when Charlie and Raquel were there, the trip felt bare bones and like random and weird. And then once they left and they're doing the pinata it was even worse even worse and when charlie and raquel were there they only went to dinner like well charlie and raquel went out which i loved for them right right that was so, like, it's so crazy because like the scandal notwithstanding like i would weirdly be like riding for raquel like i actually thought she really held her own in last night's episode and she was unequivocally wronged by these girls like they were bullies they were hypocrites but now knowing what we know how do we move forward for real because i'm like i am not on everyone else's team yeah, I agree. I'm just going to let the season play out. I, I don't know how I could ever get to a... I could never get to a place where it's like, we went from this to a seven-month affair with Sandoval that I would ever possibly understand. I know. But I said last week, like, I have no idea who Raquel is. We all just thought she was a dumb bitch. Like, maybe she's just, like, this evil plotting person. I don't know who she is still. She doesn't know who she is. She literally said the same thing that in the so episode. That was so sad. It was so sad. Oh, my God. And the stuff about, like, James... <gasps> and her parents and it made me really sad because I, I feel like it finally made sense like why they broke up and why she was still so devastated that they broke up because it's like she would have wanted to be with James and marry him like she got engaged to him but yeah. you cannot stay with someone who would say such things about your she, parents she broke up with him because she had to not because she wanted to right and like that's heartbreaking and then that person is in another relationship in six weeks yeah no it's that was shocking. Your dad is miserable because he's married to your fat mom. Like I, my jaw hit the floor. James is the fucking worst. I know. And then it's like, that's the James who sends like delivering like, you know, bangers. Fire. Yeah, I know. Later in the episode, like he is the worst a lot Human of the time. Being. Yeah. yeah. It's just been a crazy, like this episode, last night's episode was a wrench. It was. I, I enjoyed it though. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it immensely. I enjoyed the conflicting feelings. I thought I would like die over because you know Trevin's what lives. sometimes things are and never will I condone what they did by the way but sometimes things are not so linear black and white yeah you know um I thought last night's watch Robin's live was going to be like tea spilled because every time one of them goes on a podcast it's like tea 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 Katie gave nothing I was like and she she someone asked her a question that was like really good she was like we'll have to wait to the reunion like come Andy on he asked her and it's like if yeah. Andy's asking you it means you're allowed to say I feel like Danny Pellegrino was like this is bullshit yeah, there was nothing, not a drop. Honestly, I stayed up so late to watch because I got home late because I was out. And yeah. I was pissed. I was like 30 minutes of sleep that yeah, I didn't get. Yeah, it was useless. There was not, if you haven't seen it yet, you don't need to watch it. Like, it was really giving nothing. Yeah. So that's your Pump Rules recap. That was your episode. Tomorrow is our last episode of the week. I'm going to miss you guys over the weekend. But love ya. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, I have Radio Castbox, all the places where you listen to podcasts. My last Toast, leave a five-star review about a beautiful, stunning, smart, and wickedly talented we are hope you guys have an amazing thursday enjoy the latter half of the week and we'll see you tomorrow love ya bye